Hey and welcome to another Ice Age 2 video. Again, it's the old Model Warrior Village today. We've got to get through them, as you know, heaps to look at. So without further ado, let's get part 8 open and have a look at what we get inside. I can clearly see that there's a signal of some sort. Here we go. Hmm, not too bad. That's quite nice actually. That looks quite nice. Shall we properly open it and have a look? No. No, it looks quite delicate, doesn't it? You see, I, I'm keeping all of this stuff every time something comes in one of these issues, whether it's a tree or a lamppost or a signal or a piece of track, whatever it is, I always put them into a box and that box is basically just full of loose accessories and stuff, so I don't want to put anything in that's too delicate. I'm going to keep it in its little um, case, its little protective packaging for now, because it does look quite delicate. But it's pretty nice, it looks like a pretty nice signal to be honest. Um, the bog standard Hornby ones are quite unrealistic and a little bit too big but then of course the really mega realistic ratio ones are very intricate and very delicate and very easy to break. This looks like it's in between which is quite nice. I couldn't tell you what region this is, um, I don't know if it's British Rail or if it's uh, a GWR type signal, I really don't know but maybe the magazine's going to tell us. So. Let's have a look at it and see what we get in part eight. Okay, uh, the Blue Ball Railway. Oh, perfect. <laughs> um, Heritage Line I've actually visited twice this year, thanks to my good friend Josh down in uh, Oakfield, not too far from the Blue Ball Railway. Um, upper quadrant, it's an, okay, upper quadrant signal at work. Right, okay. Let's have a look so we can tear the front cover off. Upper quadrant signal. With this issue, you receive a ready-made signal. It's not lying. Find out where the signal should be positioned and how the signal system works. Overleaf, you will find that means turning the page. You will find painting instructions to finish the bus shelter. Of course, the bus shelter that we started in part seven. Yes. So we're going to find instructions on how to paint it. That's really quite nice. Although giving us the paints would have been nicer. Upper quadrant signals. So the four signals were standardised at the end of the nineteenth century. Uh, so no, it's not really telling us what region it is or anything, is it? It just seems to be like some sort of generic um, signal, which is a shame, because the really avid hardcore modelers will want to know exactly what region it is, and I can't tell you, to be honest. Um, oh gosh, right, so, the, so they, they literally spend one page on the signal, and where it's going to go. Um, overleaf, it really is, back to the bus shelter again, and painting it. Hmm. And those are the colours I need to buy. Well, I've actually got most of those, so I think we're going to be okay. <laughs> it doesn't look too bad, does it? It's kind of cute. We'll have to see how mine turns out. Okay, um, building. Cliddle, Cliddeston, Cliddeston Station, is that? Cliddeston Station? Yeah, Cliddeston, Cliddeston, Cliddeston. Oh gosh, I don't know. Um, we spoke to experienced railway modeler David Smith to find out how he used computer that computer technology to model building buildings for his N-Gage layout. Like many enthusiasts, he chose to base his model railway on a real station, Kiddleston in Hampshire. Hmm, I've never even heard of it. Cliddleston? 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 Oh, yeah, forget it. I'm, I'm sorry, I do apologise for people that are probably shouting at the screen, telling me exactly how you pronounce it, but I don't know. It is, it is a weird name, you've got to admit. It's pretty odd. Um, so, he's talking about building from scratch, all the research he did, wow, hey that looks quite nice actually. I mean, I've just put a video out about on the next project, and it looks like it's going to be the GWR Terminus, so this could be quite interesting. Yeah, that could be quite useful, constructing the buildings, hmm, yeah, that looks quite a, a nice article, quite, quite serious actually. Um, so yeah, that should be good. Gosh, look at that. An N-Gage model house. Constructing your own buildings is easier than you think, and with N-Gage being small to the eye, it is perfectly possible to be a little economical with some of the detailing. Here we show you how. Gosh, that looks exquisite, to be honest. Look at that brickwork. There's no way I could do that if that was N-Gage. No way. My hand is not that steady. Um, just ask all my surgery victims. Uh, reflective past buttering smokestacks. 
apertures, surfaces, tidy edges, any white edges of the decorative layers that show are rubbed over with a felt tip pen. The same colour as the decoration. <laughs> no way! They're cheating using pens. I love it. Okay, the Bluebell line. Okay, folks, this is an absolutely gorgeous um, Heritage Railway. It really is stunning. It's one... Of, I, I don't know if it's quite good enough to knock off the Seven Valley Railway, just because the Seven Valley Railway has so much to do at every station stop. But um, the Bluebell line is really quite beautiful, and the staff there are mega friendly, really, really nice. So I really do recommend it if you live, even if you live hundreds of miles away, go, book yourself a trip, find a cheap B&B or a Premier Inn or whatever, go and enjoy it. You will not regret it, it's beautiful. Um, and I've been there in gorgeous hot sunshine, as well as pouring down rain, and it was beautiful both times, so it really doesn't matter what the weather does. Yeah, it's a really fantastic line. I'm really glad they hear. I love this uh, Heritage thing, Britain's Heritage Lines. I do love that series. I think it's the best part of the whole magazine, to be honest. And I'm really glad they've covered the Bluebell line, because it is spectacular. It is just... <laughs> just looking at that photo there, it just brings all the memories right back. Full steam ahead! Two for the price of one, and a vintage scene. Okay. On the Bluebell Railway with a London, Brighton and South Coast Railway Terrier locomotive. Wow. Gosh, yeah, I haven't got one of those yet, actually. And they've got two there, look. I need, um... Yeah, is it? Yeah, I think they are. Are they both? Are they both terriers? Oh, I don't know. But, um, I do need a terrier. I haven't got a terrier yet. I do need one. Um, saving the Bluebell line, of course. Well, it's actually just recently been extended, I think. Um, the London South Western Railway. Um, Adams, oh, oh, right, that's an Adams, okay. It's an almost original condition. Unusual for an engine built in 1885. Wow. Do you know, that actually rings a bell. I think I, I, think I did see that in the engine shed um, on my first visit to the Blue Bell. Yeah. And look at this. Is this the school's class? It looks like one. Um, where's the little bit of text next to it? There we go. Oh, yeah. The, the Blue Bell Southern Railway. Um, oh, Mansell S15 class. Yeah, it is school's. Um, Class number 847 was rescued from a scrapyard in 1978. Because that's the design, isn't it? But the S is... Is the S for Southern or for Schools? I'm not too sure. I'm sure somebody from that area will be able to correct me. But, basically, it's gorgeous. I absolutely adore that design of locomotive. And you don't see it enough. You really don't. It's so smart. It's spectacular. It's like, um... It's like a B12. You know, the LNAR B12. Um, or, uh, it's, you know an LMS uh, Black 5. There's just something about it that's just so good looking, so smart. Fantastic. Um, I don't remember seeing a black one though. I'm pretty sure they were green when I was down there, but I could be wrong, I could be mistaken. Um, that looks like a terrier again. Uh, is it? No! Um, South East Central Railway P Class Number Three Two Three Bluebell, the flagship of the Bluebell fleet, ready for departure at Horsted Keynes, the railway's headquarters. Horsted Keynes is a gorgeous station. It's it's got quite a few platforms, loads of tracks, a beautiful signal box run by a fab guy. I think his name's Derek, and they have a like a little exhibition there, a little fair every summer. I really, really do recommend it. It's dead, dead nice. So yeah, I'm gonna enjoy that. And as a plane has decided to fly over really low, it's time to end the video, I think. Oh, hang on, no, look, the Bluebell Stepney. Probably the Bluebell's most famous engine is Stepney. Wow, of course, the little Terrier Stepney 060 tank engine. 1970 Stepney was the first engine on the newly formed railway, having spent its later BR years working the Hailing Island branch. Oh my gosh. Originally built for London, Brighton and South Coast Railway in 1875, the brightly painted engine has become a firm favourite with children visiting Bluebell. Yeah, well, oh, hey, there we go. Uh, the engine's main claim to fame uh, is as the inspiration for one of the steam engines in, in uh, Re the Reverend Audrey's uh, Thomas the Tank Engine series. That's where many of us will know Stepney from, because he is in Thomas the Tank, yeah. He's a Terrier-class locomotive in Thomas the Tank as well. That's fantastic. Oh, that's really nice. I'm going to enjoy reading about that, because now I've been there, it makes it all more special and stuff. Right, so that's part eight done. We get a signal, nothing else. Uh, some instructions on doing the bus shelter, uh, and then something on the Bluebell line, and something on how to research and build an engage railway, which is, yeah, pretty interesting. 
So, uh, thanks for watching and please look out for part 9.